Hey, what's up guys? Tom from Positively Diagnostics. This video is going to be part 3 of the 2004 Volkswagen Passat uh, P0341 cam sensor fault. We already know what's wrong with the vehicle, so if you haven't seen part 1 and part 2, uh, I suggest you go back and watch those videos. I'll put some links in the description. We already know what's wrong with the vehicle. It needs a cam adjuster and the intake cam was out one tooth. Uh, the focus of this video, I just wanna go back and look at the cam crank waveform and look at the in-cylinder pressure waveforms. We'll compare some known bads to known goods and uh, that'll be it for this. So, on to the cam crank waveform. All right guys, so this is the cam crank waveform that we took off the vehicle um, initially. Green trace is my crank, yellow trace is my cam sensor. So right here we're going to take 720 of the crank between here and here and two rotations of the crank is one rotation of the cam. And we want to focus, find a reference point So you see we have the repeating small square, two big ones. And then over here we also have the small square, two big ones. So I want to focus on this point right here where this first crank sink is. I'll zoom in. Just want to get an idea of where this cam is crossing over this crank sink. We are about one, two, three, four, fifth tooth away across the crank sink. So at the time I didn't have a known good, now we do. Let's go to the known good one. And the same thing, 720. These two right here. There's the small square, two big squares, small square, two big squares. We'll move this over, we want to focus on this crank sink right here. And that one is definitely different. We can see that leading edge crosses over um, pretty close to that crank sink. Let's go back to the other one real quick. You can see that leading edge right here on the known bad. Back to the known good, known good. So initially, if we would have had a known good cam crank, very easily to identify that we do have a timing issue. So, cam and crank test, pretty simple. Let's move on to the in-cylinder pressure waveform. All right, so here is the running in-cylinder pressure waveform that we took initially. And my concern was this little vacuum pocket right here, right at the end of the exhaust stroke and the beginning of the intake. So right here would be your intake stroke, peak compression, the power stroke, and then your exhaust back down into intake. And I was just concerned of this little pocket right here. So looking at our timing marks, the cam would have been, the intake cam would have been opening late. So right here, at the end of our exhaust stroke into our intake stroke, there should be a little bit of valve overlap, but since our intake is opening too late, what we have right here, this deep vacuum pocket, is actually both of our valves are closed. So you have the piston pushing all this exhaust out and as it pulls down, the intake valve should open, but our intake valve is opening late. So on the initial pull of this piston, our intake valve is closed, our exhaust valve is closed, and that is this huge vacuum, probably an immediate vacuum pull on this cylinder. And then our intake valve starts to open up right here, and that's why we have that deep pocket and kind of like a loss of vacuum and back into our intake stroke, or I'm sorry, back into our compression stroke. So that's what that is right there. 
the valve timing being a little late on the intake cam, basically this piston going down is pulling on nothing and it's an instant vacuum because both valves are closed when really the intake valve should be open. So let's go to a known good. Lines are a little bit thicker, it's because my pressure transducer, there's something wrong with it, but anyways. Right here, end of the exhaust stroke, straight into a vacuum, into compression. Let's go back to the known bad. End of the exhaust stroke, deep vacuum, then our intake. That pocket should not be right there. So there's the known good. Let me show you another one that I did off camera, I should have done on camera. Alright, so I should, have, I should have done this on camera, I didn't, uh, I'm not sure what I was thinking. But uh, this is in cylinder pressure cranking. And what do we notice right here? Little vacuum pocket. That right there is our vacuum pull on the cylinder when that intake valve should be open. And it's not, it's actually closed. Both valves are closed. And there's a little pull right there inside the cylinder. Let's go to this known good one. Notice, no pocket. This is on the known good engine. Valve timing is on. There's no random vacuum pull in between here. So I believe that's what's going on. Our intake valve opening too late. So there's a point as the exhaust valve is closing and the intake pull starts to happen. Our intake valve is closed. It pulls a vacuum on the cylinder, and then our intake valve opens. So I believe that's what's going on right there. So I'll try to do the math here. So we'll put cursor one here. Try to get that as close as I can. 720 of the crank. And I'll take this total millisecond time. This 6.31. We'll round it up to 632. And that'll be our total time for the four strokes to occur. We'll take that number divided by four. Six three two divided by four. And we got 158. So within the, this cycle, every 158 milliseconds there should be a different stroke occurring. So we'll take Cursor one is at fifteen seven fifteen one seven. So we'll do fifteen one seven plus one fifty eight sixteen seventy five. So we'll take cursor two and move that to sixteen seventy five. Right there. Sixteen point seven six. Okay, so right here is where our exhaust valve should be opening. And let's take 
1875 plus another 158, which would be 1833. So we'll take our cursor 1, move that to 1833. So that's about 1836. Right here, our intake valve should be opening. But it does not open, which is why we have this vacuum on the cylinder. Let's go to the next one. 1833 plus 158, 1991. We'll move cursor two. And right there should begin our compression stroke. Plus one fifty eight, twenty one forty nine. Six. It's pretty close. And that would be the end of the compression stroke and the beginning of our power stroke. 2149 plus 158, 2307. So we'll move that. Which would begin our exhaust stroke and so on and so forth back into the intake. So let's go back, I forget what that number was. Right here, somewhere in here is where our intake valve should be opening and the intake stroke begins. Our intake valve timing is late, therefore it doesn't open. So the exhaust valve closes and we have for a small amount of time, both valves are closed and there is a vacuum pull on the cylinder. So. That is what that is. It may have been a little hard to follow with the numbers, but it can still be done. There you have it, guys. A little bit of the waveform analysis. Um, initially, if we would have had a known good cam crank waveform, it would have been an easy no-brainer. Pretty simple without tearing the vehicle down. Hey, we, you have uh, a timing problem. You know, go from there. That would have been my preference anyways. Looks like the cranking in cylinder pressure waveform was a little bit more valuable. Um, you could still pick it out with the running in cylinder pressure, but it looked like it was easier to pick that issue out just cranking alone. So we have late valve timing on the intake cam. Um, for a period of time, both valves are closed when that intake stroke is occurring, which it gives you that little vacuum swoop inside the cylinder caused by a broken cam adjuster oh, the guide the piece of plastic fell off caused the cam to jump and threw our timing off and caused the cam sensor fault pretty cool we were able to see that little vacuum pull in the in cylinder pressure waveforms uh, the cranking one I think was more important so I think in cylinder pressure testing uh, cranking waveform and running waveforms definitely um, but we were able to see the issue uh, looking at in cylinder pressure which is really what I wanted to do well I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching